Hello everyone and welcome to the first look and today we'll be taking a first look of the Kiwi Years Kenta. Now this is pretty new. I believe it's just launched like this month. And uh it is a very interesting combination of 1DD and 2 planner as you can see here, you know, 1DD 2 planner, I am. Now, this price is about 90 USD today. Uh, prices do fluctuate and usually discounts are kind of given quite often at Linso itself. Now, this is provided to me from Kiwi Years, so thanks to them, they provided me this copy to give you guys an honest first look. Now, for my first look, I'll cover unboxing, first impression, impression with comparison followed by some measurements so if you want to jump to the various chapters do click on the you know the bar the scroll bars and stuff in the link or in my description so uh, without wasting time let's take a look at what's inside so you can see this is the IEMs this is how usually a Kiwiers display their IEMs they are on top here and that's pretty much it for the item in the box. These are the IEMs and this is a box of items. So unzipping it, you will see what's inside, a cable. Now this is a single-ended cable, not something that you know you can change the plugs. And then Kiwi Ears give quite a bit of tips here. Now you can see these are the soft tips, the I think silicone or semi-hard tips and then the pure soft silicone tips. Now uh, I'm not sure which one I will use so I will just pick any one for this first impression itself. I will pick up the one that is the same as the last time I used for my previous Kiwi Ears review. So let's take a closer look at the IEM itself. You can see this is the IEM, this is the Kenta. You can see this is the front plate, nice carved in lines. Pretty slick, uh, this feels like a plastic or metal plate, not too sure. And this is a plastic shell itself for sure. There is a lip and then there is a filter in front. This mesh filter will prevent dirt and debris from entering the IEM. This is a two pin, you can see the connection here and it is flat so you can use most cables on this. So that's really about it. This is it for the look at the IEM. So without wasting time, let's put on the cables and of course, uh, listen to some music. So for the first impression, I tried it, you know, with Aino Akuruhi, Ibarra, and both of them are from Edo. Followed by, I tried uh, one of the first take songs uh, sung by Yuasobi into the ra Racing Into The Night. I can see in this screenshot here. Now, the thing about this IEM is that I feel right, it is a... Uh, different tuning from the ones I usually have. The normal tuning these days are a little bit more on the cooler and of course the more, uh, I would say it's clear and accurate side. While this one has a slight leaf somewhere in the midst, this creates a little bit of a nasally effect but also gives a slightly warm thick and slightly smoother meats itself. The meats are not that, um, it's probably elevated in the lower meats region somewhere there and it's creating this very interesting more smooth but slightly bloomy effect for the meats itself. Now the base wise I would say is it has a lot of impact, very nice impact itself. Uh, though there is still good amount of texture and sub bass all around but the impact is a noticeable one and it really can be felt when you listen to the songs like Ibarra and uh, Into the Night you know. And uh, for I know I agree there's a lot of sub bass in certain parts. I find that the sub bass here is not super super powerful uh, but I think the texture is pretty nice there. Now, for the treble or upper meats also, I would say is there is some sibilance in Ibarra, the song itself, some sibilance in uh, Edo's voice. Uh, this is usually not a problem. Many, many tracks, or should I say many, many IEMs I've heard also have a similar sibilance issue. It's just the degree of um, difference, the amount, whether is it tolerable or not. And this is more in the tolerable range for me. But when it comes to the higher energy itself, um, in the treble and stuff, I find that there is treble. The symbols are very clear, definitely for sure. But it doesn't feel very extended or very bright or cool sounding. So I would say as the highs don't feel like there's a lot of them, you know. Maybe in the range, I don't know, in the in the range that just have a bit of edge to it to give like symbols, clarity and stuff, there is something there. But beyond that, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of air, a lot of extension. Uh, feels a little bit more rounded off at the end for the treble region. Now, sound stage wise, it's uh, medium to small for me. Uh, more on the smallish side. 
that's how I felt about the sound signature for Soundstage itself. But what's really good for it is really if you listen to tracks that are purely vocal oriented, like I know Akuruhi where you benefit from that meets smoothness, which is really really nice. I find for Ibarra, which is a bit more of a rock song from Edo, um, pretty okay still a bit more punchy, dynamic, but because of the lack of the highs and stuff, and due to the lifting in the mid somewhere, and this gives a little bit of that muffled muffled sound, uh, I don't enjoy it as much, because I prefer Ibarra to be like ultra clear to me, but for Aino Akuruhi, it's fine, very nice and smooth, for Racing in the Night, pretty okay too. Now, this is for, of course, first impression. Now, I'm going to take a comparison, and uh, normally, when I compare this, I want to compare to something you know, quite similar. But I've been thinking that you know, more often than not, when you buy something like this, you are upgrading from somewhere. Because at this price point of about 890 USD, you are definitely upgrading. And most likely, you're upgrading from something like the Zero Two. So the comparison I am will be the Zero Two. Now, for the comparison, I use Aino Akuruhi and I play mainly the chorus region where she starts going slow then she ramps up to full power and then you will hear cymbals and drums all kicking in in for this song so it covers both the vocal aspect pre you know chorus and then during the chorus itself the instruments and this is where i think uh there is a distinct difference between the zero two and the uh kenta itself i would say as the kenta is technically better technically better but let me explain now first if you like perceived meets clarity i think it's due to the tuning itself i do feel like the zero two outright has a better perceived meet clarity purely because there is no of this uh, slightly smooth and muffled sound in the meets itself which the kenta does have but it also means that the kenta when listening to the vocal region which is pre-chorus in aino akuruhi there is this smoothness that is very enjoyable, you know, this very lush, smooth sound in the mids region, very enjoyable on the Kenta there. Now, when it comes to the bass, I find that both of them are about the same, not too much difference there. Um, the impact, the quality, I would say is very similar, not the most in quantity and also not the most defined, and both of them are kind of the same there for the bass. But the mids region-wise, uh, firstly, it's the difference in the perceived clarity for the mids because of the slight muffleness in Kenta, but the Kenta has everything better, which means that, firstly, it is more powerful sounding. And that is because, you know, as I said, Aino Akuri starts off pre-chorus as pretty much smooth, she's singing, and then she starts, you know, really using all her energy when she enters the chorus with all the drum beats and stuff. This is where the Kenta is a lot better. It feels really powerful, like really, really powerful for the vocals, the mids. And this is also a time where the slight muffle notes does go away and it comes in with a lot of clarity and details during those parts where she becomes more powerful itself. So it's very nice sounding in those regions. The power in the mids, the vocals, the various instruments, very nice there. And then this is where the treble also comes in where there is like cymbals that are hitting, small little instruments behind and I think the Kenta does it better. The decay on the instruments, especially for the cymbals, are so much better on the Kenta. It feels a lot more natural. While the Zero Two kind of like feels a bit unnatural and then dies off suddenly. So if you ask me, the decay in the treble region for instruments, the Kenta is like way, 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 way better. You know, this is the difference, right? So if you ask me from the technical standpoint the kenta is better uh, it is at least more powerful in the mids more energetic and also has a nicer treble region and a more realistic treble region it does have only one shot for if you ask me a zero two and that is a slight muffleness of the sound when you listen at you know slightly below average volume usually the parts where the singer is just singing alone I do find that that is a personal preference. Some of my friends do love it. I noticed some IEMs are also tuned that way. But at least for me, I do prefer the slightly more clarity. But I really prefer the Kenta's power where it starts injecting in. Very similar to something I hear out of, say, the Noble Onyx, which is magnitudes more expensive, but also has the same effect where at lower volume, it feels a bit more muffled. But other than that, you know, the Kenta is, if you ask me, a technically better IEM. 
not only that, I just want to add on that the Kenta is also better in terms of separation, the instrument separation, especially for the cymbals and the drums. The separation is a lot better on the Kenta. You can hear the cymbals very accurately while the drum hits, while in the Zero Two, it kind of just get mixed together and then clumped together as one sound. So if you're looking for technicalities, the Kenta is definitely a definite upgrade. If you're looking for power, the Kenta is also an upgrade. But if you're looking for the more generic tuning you get today where the mids are a little bit more neutral and clear, uh, I'll say as the Zero Two does provide you that a little bit more versus the Kenta. The Kenta does provide uh, a nicer and more powerful mids but at the cost of some of this muffled muffled sound, which uh, to me is a pro and con. And uh, that's really it for the comparison and also the initial impression of sound. Overall, I think that the Kenta to me is firstly, it has quite a bit of bass energy, uh, quite a lot of uh, texture and quantity and quality there. Not the most defined, especially considering the price range, but very good for its price bracket. I do enjoy its bass. At least there is texture, you know, it's not like a lost texture with just boomy bass. It's very clean bass. Then when it comes to the mids, as I said earlier in both my initial impression and of course my comparison, the mids is very powerful, very energetic, slightly elevated, but it does have that slight muffled sound in certain portion of the mids, which to me uh, is not something I prefer all the time. But if I'm listening to pure vocals, like I know Akuri, I'm not affected by it. But when I listen to Ibarra, I do prefer the clarity type. But, you know, depends on the sound itself. However, once the energy kicks in and the vocalist raises her voice or the instrument plays louder and more defined, I would say as the Kenta is pretty good there. There is good amount of details and clarity. The muffleness does go away at that point in time. And also, it is very well separated between all the instruments itself. And then when it comes to the highs, I would say as the cymbals, at least from what I hear from my tracks I listen, is well defined. The decay is very good. I will say that the overall airiness is not there. I think this is not a very airy sounding headphone or earphone. Uh, it means that the higher, higher treble regions are not that great. Uh, but other than that, you know, for its price point and what it does is very in line. At least it's a better IEM than Zero Two in most aspects, except for the perceived clarity in the mids. Other than that, it's better. It's better separation, better details, and overall better quality. Pretty nice IEM if you ask me. Now, this is, of course, my first impression and my comparison. One last section on measurements, and then, you know, I will do a conclusion itself. So I completed the measurement with this device here and you can see the measurement on the screen now. A notable thing is that the uh, higher mids region is quite boosted and then the lower mids region is actually sloped down from the base for quite a bit before you actually reach the bottom. And this is probably the reason why the sound is a little bit uh, muddy muddy sound at the lower base area. And then when it turns loud, it becomes very very clear and very powerful because of the higher mids region. So it's quite interesting, I guess, uh, the overall rendition of this IEM. Now, I just want to talk about gaming a little bit. So I played Black Myth Wukong using this IEM just now. And uh, I would say as, firstly, the bass is very nice. It gives a lot of atmosphere to the game itself. A lot of the footsteps, walking, and moving around, a lot of bass energy there. And then, you know, when the boss fight happens, you can really hear the bass of the various background instruments playing through because that's usually how they build atmosphere using the bass itself. Very, very good with this IEM. Now, when it comes to the direction, I would say the sound stage is pretty small. It's just around your head, but left, right, back is quite good, front not too great. Now back with Wukong don't feel like it has a very extensive and good sound system I have to say the truth because when I rotating around I feel like the sound goes from left to like back left, center, back right, right. It's kind of weird, it's not like continuous. I do not know whether is it the game or is it the IEM. I do know that at the back I can tell it's back, back left, back right but for the front it's a bit more of a flat. Though I can tell front straight and front up and left right. So I think that positioning wise is pretty okay, but sound stage is pretty small. I would say as you know, you can tell things are coming from which direction, but don't expect it to be very immersive when it comes to the sound itself. But the bass is really good. It gives a lot of atmosphere and feels to it. So I think overall it is a very nice IEM for the purpose of gaming. Details and resolution is so really nice for games. Very clear and picks up all the small little things that happen around the scene. But then again, Black Myth Okong isn't some FPS game. so. Take it for what it is. And uh, really that's about it. This is the 
first look of the Kanta, I think my sound impression didn't change for my first impression even after measurement. So pretty much, you know, if you really want to see my sound impression again, go back to the first impression area and take a look there. And uh, I think pretty much this is exactly how it is all the way to the end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this first look. This is once again provided to me by Kiwius, costs about 90 USD. And if you're interested, you can go visit their site there. I don't take any money from them, they just pass me a review. I'm very happy about it. Uh, I just want to share with you guys this particular IEM. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Do like and subscribe if you enjoy my content.